One of the things that we've talked about in the past is the study that was done at McGill Cancer Clinic where they interviewed 64, I think, oncologists discreetly and asked them if they were diagnosed with cancer or if a, a loved one was diagnosed with cancer, would they submit to chemotherapy? And the statistics are actually pretty shocking. 58 of them said no, they wouldn't. That's over 90% of oncologists who regularly prescribe chemotherapy to their patients would not take it themselves or their family. And to me, that shows that there are, there are many oncologists out there that are prescribing this chemo knowing that it, that it harms the patients, doesn't do any good just for the fact that they want to keep their job or they want the money or what, what are the reasons? What, in your opinion, what do you think about that study? I've met dozens and dozens and dozens of oncologists in my 30 years of practice and the truth of the matter is, and this is going to upset a lot of the medical community, but when I talk to them about it, they start understanding. I've met one oncologist in my life that wouldn't be classified as a sociopath, and you can define sociopath. Yeah, so, so when I hear the word sociopath, I think of somebody that has no social conscience, that would do whatever it takes to further themselves at the expense of others. That's a perfectly good definition, no remorse, yet they're willing to give chemicals to a person, knowing that they're not going to help the person, especially if the oncologist has been doing it for any, any length of time at all, knowing that it causes harm, collecting the money for it, and moving on to the next patient. And that, by definition, would make them sociopathic. No conscience, no remorse, yet giving them drugs they themselves would never take. Uh, I know that sounds terrible, and I know, there, I know there are exceptions, but the exceptions, I've only met one in 30 years who mm -hmm. actually did a television show with me and went over that year's uh, cancer report from the American Cancer Society in which they showed that there had been a decrease in prostate care, uh, cancer which was all they could show was positive in one area of the country. Well, I read the same report she did, only I went a little bit further and did a little bit of research and found that that area of the country did not do norm, had the lowest rate of rectal or prostate exams in the country. Mm. So the area that had the decrease in prostate cancer was not getting treated for prostate cancer or tested for prostate cancer. Mm. So they had the lowest number of deaths from prostate cancer. And I gave this to her on the show, and she gave me this really strange look. And she said, you know, to be honest, you're absolutely tr right. You're absolutely correct. And after the show, she came up to me, and uh, we talked for a brief time. And she said, everything you said was correct, and within a week, she had left oncology mm. in Florida and moved to North Carolina to practice a different type of medicine. She was the only one that really had a conscience. And I dealt with one of her patients before, a uh, hepatic cancer case that uh, ended up doing very, very well, getting over the, the cancer and actually a year and a half later dying from an infection in the hospital when they were doing some gastric surgery. Which happens. Which often. happens very often, yeah. Hospital, iatrogenic death is, is much, much more prevalent. Uh, we all hear how high it is. There are several hundred thousand, or they say 200 to 300,000 a year. Actually, it's probably many times that. Iatrogenic meaning doctor-induced? Physician-induced right. death. And that can be, uh, physician-induced also includes nurses. Sure. You know, they, they go from one patient to another. They spread uh, MRSA, for example, methicillin-resistant staph, and patients die. And uh, so, you know, to answer your question, when I say sociopaths, uh, I don't take it lightly. Mm. I take it very seriously. The ones I've known the most closely have been that and proven it. 
Well, it's, it's almost the opposite of the Hippocratic Oath, isn't it? It is the exact opposite of the Hippocratic Oath. Yeah. It, it's funny, MDs and NDs both take the Hippocratic Oath. We will do no harm. Naturopaths actually follow it. Right. Their preemptive goal is to find cause, treat cause of disease, and create health. On the other hand, allopathic physicians don't tend to take it quite so seriously. That's they, an uh, understatement, isn't it? <laughs> that's, they, yeah, be yeah. an understatement. Right. But I don't want to paint all doctors with a real broad brush mm -hmm. because there are a lot of extraordinary physicians. Give you a great example. When I moved to Melbourne, Florida, there was a very, very large orthopedic group, and I won't name their group, but they had one physician that was an extraordinary orthopedic surgeon, specialized in joint replacement and oncological surgery. So he'd been trained in oncology. He wanted to integrate medicine. And so he called several of his friends and we had a meeting. At the first meeting there were 12 physicians. And we decided that those 12 physicians were interested enough uh, to have another meeting. The next meeting there were 26 physicians mm. that really wanted to get into integrative medicine so that they could do more to help the patients. So we decided to have one final meeting and ask some final questions and try to set things up, get things rolling. The next meeting there were 48 physicians there. Mm. And this is just in Brevard County. And at that meeting I asked the simple question, how many of you can practice outside of your group? How many of you are not bound by a non-compete clause? Not one mm. could do it. Mm. So it wasn't that the physicians did not want to learn. It wasn't that the physicians did not want to participate and, and really help the patients to the best of their ability. Their hands were tied. Mm. And the government tends to tie their hands and in so doing creates massive medical bills that are mm. unnecessary. Take some of the really truly good doctors, the best doctors that have been you know, practicing over 10 years that know they need to know more. The longer you practice, the more you know you don't know if you're a good doctor. Mm -hmm. um, it takes these doctors and defangs them, neuters them. Yeah. They can't move forward like they want to.